Awesome. We got the best seat sweet. in the house. Yeah, yeah, I love this. This is this is just sweet. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, dude. Welcome here. Welcome to Drum Lessons Live. Hey guys. We're here with the amazing. And I'm put the pressure on, dude. Cool. With the flap. <laughs> You're yeah. not nervous. Say my last name. Say my last name. No. I told you, I said, I said yesterday, <laughs> me and Kovis, I said, I'm not, I'm just introducing you always as Kovis. And yeah. I'm not even going to okay. go with the whole How do you pronounce thing. it? Potriter. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to now try. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Uh, it's a tough one. It's a very tough one. Um, you guys want to welcome you here, and I, I especially want to thank Kovis for doing this, taking some time out of his crazy, crazy schedule that we've had the last <laughs> couple weeks. Yeah, it was insane. And you're fried this morning, because we had a really late night last night. We did. Going... <laughs> Going to a hockey game? Yeah, it was friggin' sweet. <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah. Oh. But then, then we got lost on the SkyTrain on the way home. So yeah, we cool. did. We made a few loops because we couldn't find the transfer from the Millennium yeah. Line to the Expo Line. What the <laughs> fuck? Oh, look at this. Talking, know, talking West but, Coast already. <laughs> but he's, more street, he's way more street smart than me. Because I'm just like, I'm so dumb with that kind of stuff. So he actually finally figured it out. Because I'm from Africa. <laughs> that's how we roll. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I'm cool. bush smart. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Guys, so we're going to... One thing I want to do is we want to make an announcement in a couple seconds here. Um, the second thing I want to quickly tell you guys before uh, we actually get started is uh, we're, we're going to be taking some questions. And mm -hmm. so in order to get your questions answered, um, the, the chat rolls too fast, so I can't take them in there. But you just go to the drumlessons.com Facebook wall. Uh, there's yeah. a link right beside the video on the right. You just go there and post your question on the wall. And either Dave or myself will check it while we're going live here. All yeah. right, so that's probably the only time I'm going to say that. So if you want to ask questions, go ahead and do that. Uh, open it up in another tab so you don't lose the stream. Yes. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is what we've been working on. For two weeks. For two weeks. <laughs> and uh, that was a track from the upcoming project uh, titled The Cobus Method. Do you want to tell them a little bit about it? or? Should yeah, I? well, I think it's really simple. Uh, the people who follow the videos know that I've never had lessons before. And it, it has... It's a good thing sometimes, and it's also kind of a bad thing sometimes, but uh, I, I really enjoy the fact that I've never had lessons before and that I've kind of used the internet to kind of teach myself. And the Kovis method is just about that. Like, how did I teach myself? Uh, what did I do in the beginning? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's can, I, can I elaborate a little bit about what's on it or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Go for it, it's yeah. Got, it's Don't got, give too much of it away. Okay, okay, okay. We, haven't edit, <laughs> we just finished filming. We haven't even edited it yet. Yeah. There is a sneak peek on kovasmethod.com, but yeah. Yeah. I'm, it just, it's, it's, got, uh, it's got the stuff on it that is so, such bad English, but it contains the videos that I, <laughs> or, the, or the information that I wish I had when I started playing. So I'm very, very excited about it. And it also has like play-alongs. And um, so it's like funk and punk and pop and like hardcore stuff. So it's like a wide um, variety of music and you can choose. I just want to see the bass drum or I just want to hear the bass drum. Like it's really, it gives you many, many, many options to kind of dissect the parts. Just Very stop cool. me if I'm going too far. Um, what else? Live band. Live band. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah. That's, that's the last thing that we shot. That was my, one of my favorite things. That totally. That totally, totally. and then he did this thing where 
he listens to a song he's never heard before and then actually dissects it and you guys get to see the whole progression of, of yeah. how he, you know, take from conception to like learning and playing yeah. the song. Yeah. So, so the and first step cool. is like listening to song to the song for the first time in my life, and then taking however many takes and minutes to kind of dissect it piece by piece and play it at the end of the of the piece. But the live band thing was also incredible. We wrote and recorded five songs like from scratch. So we start like writing a song, and then three hours later we have uh, two or three hours later we have like the finished product, and we filmed everything, and that'll be edited down into like a I don't know how long how are you going to cut some stuff out, but <laughs> it's got the whole process from yeah. a band, like somebody bringing a riff to the table and like writing the song from scratch. Yeah. So it's yeah. full of stuff that I wish I wasn't in so that I could watch it and not be irritated by my voice. But <laughs> yeah. it's really cool. It's, it's very cool. I'm very yeah. excited. So we just want to tell yeah. you guys, this isn't like, we're not trying to uh, flog it too much, but if you guys want to hear more about that, you want to kind of follow everything, there's a, a sneak peek video actually posted on cobusmethod.com. Um, yeah, if you want to go there, check it out, sign up. Yeah, updates. you can sign up to be notified, right? If you want to be notified of new content, new videos, yeah. we're going to be releasing stuff over the coming months as we get it edited and stuff like that. So definitely check it out. It's going to be an awesome product. I'm super excited to see how you write all your parts for Because, I mean, you have tons of videos on YouTube. Yeah, right? so yeah. It's going to be super exciting. Um, to that. I'm so stoked that it's finally filmed mm -hmm. and that yeah. somebody can, people can finally check it out. Cause for sure. Especially, like, dissecting... A song that already has drums like we did we did three three songs like that from scratch yeah, yeah. that I, like i took a song that already exists and i kind of uh, from like from start to finish and i love that that's on camera now like yeah, yeah. people can watch the whole process if yeah. they want to that was that when we filmed it that was my favorite part yeah and then when we filmed the band stuff yeah oh, it's the same part. it's the same for me <laughs> yeah it always works that way yeah of so, course you could take some questions yeah definitely. Oh, we got lots of people uh, asking questions probably like we're on the Facebook channel here now, so... There's probably the almost Facebook. 100 questions in all oh, the different things now. So yeah, we're going to do our yeah. best to get to as many as possible, um, and we'll stop talking. I will stop talking. I know everyone always gets mad at me because I talk too much. So it's <laughs> your turn. Don't let me talk too much. Yeah. Okay, um, Kovis, Janice, Ryher says, when did you start playing, and for how long do you play per day? I started playing middle of 2002, so that's... Eight years, almost eight years. Almost nine years now. Almost nine years with the flip. Yeah. It's been a long time. Time flies, man. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a drummer, dude. I stick to fours and eights. That's why I had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> so almost nine years. I can't believe that. Yeah, middle 2002. And in the beginning, I practiced a lot. In the beginning, I probably played... I'm talking about like the first two years of my playing. I probably played um, two hours a day, some days. Um, I tried to play... Well, I played every single day kind of chased my parents out of the house so that I could play. <laughs> uh, yeah, I played a lot in the beginning. First two years, probably two hours a day. Um, at the moment, I don't get that anymore. I probably play four, hour, four or five hours a week, maybe, if I'm really lucky, because I don't have a permanent practice space. So it makes it really difficult. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah. I told him when, uh, just a couple of days ago, it's like the, the, how far you've come in only eight years is... Oh, thank you. It's phenomenal, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate yeah. it. I think I can't really take credit for that. It's like, because when the first time when I sat down behind the kit, it, it just came so naturally. Yeah. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying it's like, it, it's like rec it's receiving a, a car as a gift. You can't say, uh, this is my car because you received it as a gift. And it just feels like I could just play drums from the beginning. So yeah. it came That's so awesome. naturally. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, you've ins I know you've inspired a lot of people. Cool, so I, I, got a, I got a question for you here. This is one that um, Steve, one of our... One of our buddies, oh, Steve. <laughs> what? Okay, Steve Clausen. Oh, Steve Clausen dude. posted this. <laughs> Please screen that question. <laughs> make, uh, make sure I, that it's I okay. It, I, I figured I want to know this too. It's actually been on my mind. What does Deedlebag mean? Because oh, that's your YouTube, yeah. his YouTube channel is Deedlebag, if, if you guys don't know. But. Yeah, I wish I could give like a really well thought out <laughs> answer and say it means something important, but it really doesn't. Because keep in mind, when I created this channel, like, Almost, probably three years ago, almost four years ago now, I didn't think I was going to have 190,000 friggin' subscribers at some stage. I didn't think, like, marketing-wise, what is, like, a nice name? <laughs> I didn't think, like... <laughs> so like, it's just random. Yeah, so it's yeah. just, I just thought, this word just pops into my head, and I thought, this is fun to say, deedle bag. Because it is fun to say, deedle bag. It's, like, it's a nice little word, and I thought, 
what the hell? Yeah. This y- new YouTube thing, it's gonna blow over in like a month anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, I didn't think that, but I was just like, what What the hell, why yeah. not? And, yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, so that's why. Okay, Will Garner says, uh, and this a couple of people have liked this question, that's why I'm choosing it. He says he always gets, uh, always seems to get stuck doing the same kind of fills. What do you think he could do to enhance them? You, we have spoken about this mm-hmm. uh, in the past few days. I think if, if technically you are really proficient at playing drums, so, so your body is kind of ahead of your, of your creativity, you can play pretty much anything you think of, but you can't think of new things to play. That's, that's one problem. And another problem is uh, having like sick creative ideas on the spot, but you're not technically proficient enough. So you can't play what you're thinking. So it's always like that battle. And in that case, it sounds like like you're struggling to find new things to play, so you're almost technically better than you are creative. Mm-hmm. And my what I do then is I get away from the drum set. Like I just don't play drums for a week. I just listen to music. I'm trying to get. Well, I don't even try to get inspired. I just get away from the drum set. I just I just miss the drum set. And then when I get back to it, then within the first ten minutes, you're like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like where did that come from? It's just like it just feels like you need to to miss the kits again and kind of just adjust the balance but it's always a battle it's like always you're always well for me i'm always technically ahead of my creative creativity or creatively ahead of my technicality wow that's a complicated sentence yeah, but that worked but that's that's how that's the kind of the yeah. battle yeah. i bet you will i bet you weren't expecting that as an answer <laughs> what i recommend you do is not play drums <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the five second version <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, you, know, you could go more in depth than that but we'll leave it at that yeah um Okay, this is from Mark Samut. He says, how did you... S- oh, it's kind of two-part, I guess. I'll, I'll just ask the second part. What's your best drumming moment on YouTube? This, could, this can include you getting endorsed or even hitting 100,000 subscribers. What's your most like, oh, memorable that's moment? A, that's, a, that's such a good question, but it's such a difficult question. Because the thing is, I, I'm not a performer. Well, I never knew I was kind of a performer, so I'm kind of a shy guy, so I'm easily overwhelmed. So when Red Jumpsuit Apparatus favorited my cover of Face Down, that was unbelievable. And when I hit like a thousand views a day, I think it was, this was a long time ago, but that was huge, like a thousand people. That's like the amount of people that, more than the amount of people that was in my, in my high school. It's like every single day. I couldn't so that's believe that. The, the band actually favorited your Yeah, yeah. On, oh, on their okay. official channel. So I, so I knew that the band members saw my video. I didn't even care about that they favorited it. I was just so overwhelmed that they actually saw me playing to their song. Yeah. Uh, what else? Getting sponsored was enormous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was very big to me. This is very big. I guess these are all kind of YouTube moments because it, it's all made possible by the YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's really difficult, many things, yeah. But in the beginning, hitting like a hundred, oh no, like a thousand views a day. That was, I remember that being pretty big. That's pretty big, yeah. 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 I got a question here from this one's from Jameson Jerving. Says, what are some of the best bands to play along with if you're learning to play drums by ear? Uh, the the first thing is bands you like. So songs that you like. It's it's if if your friends tell you, oh listen to this Avenged Sevenfold song, listen to the song, it's really sweet. Then don't do that if you don't like the song because it's going to be difficult and irritating and frustrating. But if you like a song, regardless of how difficult it is, then you're going to enjoy playing it and you'll probably be really successful at learning it by ear. I started, but the first song I ever played on drums, on my own drums, was Sweetness by Jimmy Eat World. And that's not an easy song, drumming wise, especially for a guy that's just sitting down on his own kit for the first time in his life. And I butchered the song, but I loved it so much that I kind of, I, I enjoyed struggling with it. So I enjoyed learning it. And like I said, I, I did, in the beginning, you're not going to nail the song perfectly. Don't even expect that because you're just starting out. Everybody struggles in the beginning. But I think if you like the song, um, regardless of how simple or how complicated it is, you'll <coughs> always be able to kind of get it to a level where you can learn it, like simplify it for yourself. But maybe simple songs is a good choice. But like I said, the most important thing is songs. So song, to, songs that you love. Yeah, that you dig. Yeah. Gives you motivated, I guess. Yeah, too. totally. Yeah. totally. And so I was going to ask you, Rory or Rory or... O'Neill says, uh, <laughs> what was the first song you learned to play? And you kind of answered that. Yeah. Well, I, I did play a few other songs on my, my friend John. My friend John had a, had a drum kit and we went to his house before I had my own. And we played Happy by Sita or Sita or Sita, I don't know. She had this, she's like one hit wonder. She had this single called Happy and I played that. Yeah. And I played, <clears throat> what else? 
like life house stuff because that was nice and simple but we would just go to his house and kind of jam on the kit so uh sweetness wasn't the first song i ever played but i can't even remember what was the first song i ever played but but sweetness was the first song that i like actually put headphones on my head and sat down my own drum set alone in my room and kind of started just jamming along the first song you really dissected yeah. totally totally yeah, yeah. is I'll that on youtube that. yet you have that one filmed that's actually i not not that version I, like i didn't set up a camera the first time i sat behind the kid yeah. but i did use it as the first part of my tribute video i had made a tribute video in like 2008 oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah cool awesome um a lot of people are asking i got a question from eduardo um hold on eduardo okay uh jeffrey jacobson um they're all asking about your foot technique uh, can you quickly maybe just give them a demo of the slide thing you do, even just for playing groove? Yeah, uh, the technique that I use is called, well, the technique that I use the most is called the slide technique. So usually if, if my hand, excuse, excuse the blister, but if my hand is kind of the pedal, then the slide technique just means you hit a stroke and then you slide up. Or actually, I think you can slide down if you want to, but the, the premise of the technique is just that you slide. There's a movement in between note one and note two. And I didn't think it, I didn't know it was the slide technique when I played it. I probably played it for, sheesh, like three or four years before I knew it had a name and it existed outside of my bedroom. Like that it, some, like other people actually use this technique. I kind of just stumbled onto it. But uh, yeah, I use the slide technique for the most part for all my double strokes. And I've recently also gotten into heel toe for like, especially for the double bass. But I think if, if you guys haven't seen exactly what I did with my, what I do with my foot. I kind of cut to the foot cam in, in some of the drum covers, but let me just kind of, yeah, there we go. Let me just kind of uh, play a little groove and I'll try to focus heavily on using the slide. I'll try to slow it down as much as possible as well so you can see kind of what I'm doing, but let's just see what happens. That's fast. That's awesome, man. <laughs> cool. That's, really that's awesome. Dave, Dave I, is the slide too. I lose slide technique too, and uh, you, you got it nailed. It's awesome. You guys, I yeah. wish you could see my view. I, my, I just have the best seat in the house. I know. If your laptop wasn't in the way, I'd have the second bed. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> hey, uh, Kobus, I got a question here that goes along with this. A lot of people might be wondering, what is your shoe size? Um, in, in South Africa, it's a, it's a 10. Kind of a ten and a half, maybe, because okay. we've got wide hobbit feet. That's probably feet. the same out here. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, this is these are elevens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my feet are a little bit bigger in the states, it seems. Cool. Ryan, Ryan uh, from the DrumLessons.com Drum Forum is asking, uh, what are some drummers that influence you, and will you ever do some Red Hot Chili Peppers? <laughs> 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 um, some drummers that influenced me. Uh, Travis Barker was very high. Well, he's kind of still high on the list, but he was by far number one when I started playing. I played Blink-182 probably for the first few months. I don't know how many, probably three or even six months. Like the, the first chunk of my playing, Sum 41, some Sum 41, but mostly Blink-182. And uh, loved his style, loved his playing. I loved his groove. And um, I don't know if it's eighth notes or sixteenth, like that. That's sixteenth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He like he loves that kind of hip hoppy, funky vibe. And he's got a really like tight style, like the grooves. I just love that. And yeah. um, and that's still evident to my style today. I think I love the grooves. And um, Tony Rooster Jr. Huge influence, especially re with regards to like fluidity and how he moves from certain parts of the kit like just totally naturally like it just seems like it's the 
like the economy of motion he's just like it just it just happens that's that's something i tried to emulate in the beginning and you just met him didn't you yeah i did dude it that's was crazy down. that is awesome it was unbelievable Tony racer jr yeah, yeah such a good guy man you see he posted a video on his uh personal channel just with your iphone of, of tony just getting in behind my setup and just like yeah. ripping it to it's, shreds it's dude. crazy that's unbelievable awesome. but, but such a good guy actually yeah, yeah such a good guy uh cool. also mike portnoy loved his falls who else just like dude love mike portnoy love mike yeah, portnoy. he's awesome oh man he I, I, <laughs> he really had a, he, a huge influence on the way that i play falls not just straight note combinations but like mixing it up even between like the hands and the feet sometimes for sure yeah but really creative falls cool. are you gonna do a solo for us I think we should get him to do a solo. One yeah, more question, man. then we'll do a solo. Okay. One more question, is that okay. right? Yeah, it's okay. Actually, 10 more questions. I don't like soloing. Dude, you gotta do a solo. I'll try you my gotta best. Do a solo. I'll, I promise you, I'll try my best. I'm not a big fan of the solo. Don't solos, worry, people, are, we're just hanging out, man. Okay, sweet. Just I'll just jam. Let's not call it a solo. Yeah. I'll just jam. jam. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. Even Let's if you play Groove, dude, I would okay, just sweet. like to sit well, here yeah, and watch you play. Okay, sweet. Yeah, one more question. Well, another guy from the forum is asking, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he says, Sometimes I get frustrated practicing the same repetitive things and I'm feeling like I'm not making any progress as a drummer. What practice tips do you have to maximize improvement? He said thanks. He's a big fan. <laughs> Sweet. I really appreciate a person whose name Jared can't pronounce. Well, you can, you can see it's, it's HVT, HVY. Oh, uh, I'm just going to call you Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. And... Uh, <laughs> With regards to your question, I think the biggest thing that I want to say is that always know that every, I know this is going to sound so hippie and so cliche, but every second that you spend behind the kit is worth something. It, like you're never hitting the ceiling. It, like in the beginning, if you play for an hour, then you progress an enormous amount. And then, and then a month after that, if you play for an hour, then you progress a little less. And like it, it kind of goes like this. Later on in your life, you have to play for like, you have to practice something incessantly for like a month and you just progress this little bit it, or it feels like that but it, it the bottom line is every second that you spend behind the kit every more time that you hit the snare or the hats is one more time that you're hitting the snare so you know it better i know that sounds so cliche but it's just my approach and it feels like even though you're not feeling the progression film yourself like take a little video of yourself playing a solo and then a month later check it out and film a new one and then compare the two just, to, just to see it visually, yeah. And then post it on YouTube. Yeah, totally. A thousand plays a, a, a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's really important to be aware of the fact that you're always moving forward, even if it's baby steps. So yeah. just keep practicing. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Do you mind jamming out for us a little bit? I mind. You mind. But I'll do it. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I'm just kidding. But it's not my favorite thing in the world. I, I feel the Dude, pressure now. Dude, you say that, but then I, he, he, like before. He's just going to slay. He just rips yeah. it up no, in man, here. I'm so friggin' intimidated right now. Okay, let's just see what happens. Oh, there's only probably like a thousand people watching. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Oh, I really appreciate way that. To, way, wow. way to boost it. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's just see what happens. Dude.
The bell. <laughs> the bell. Dude. I tell you, I am getting one of those bells. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I, I know. I'm totally getting one of those I love this thing. Jared hates it though because I play it everywhere. It's well, like a new toy, dude. No, at first you I, don't hate it, though. But I don't hate it. I love oh, it. I dude. think more the more the better. Yeah. But you put it in the in the fills. Dude, so that was cool. that was fantastic. Though. Yeah. Thank you. It's awesome. I don't like uh, I don't like the speed as much, but I like the grooves. Yeah. Yeah. I need to work on my solos. Oh, dude, that's good. that. But it was Better fun. than any tool that, uh, that I can do. No <laughs> way. Or Jerry can do. <laughs> yeah, no totally. Ways. I'll admit that. Yeah, but no, thank yeah, you. It was pretty good, so. Sweet, yeah. thank you. Cool, you guys, if you're just showing up, um, we're here with Kobus, and mm-hmm. I'm Jared. This I'm is Dave. Dave. Yeah. If you guys want to ask a question, all you do is go to the uh, Facebook or drumlessons.com Facebook wall, type in your question. Uh, we'll do our best to get to it. Uh, there's, there's a lot there, so go put it there now. And um, You never know. Yeah, you never know, right? Um, we are announcing our... Uh, what do we want to call it? We're, in, I guess, the Cobus method. Yeah. Cobus yeah. Method. I was going to call I was going to think of some snazzy word for it. Yeah. <laughs> but we announced the Cobus method, and that we posted a sneak peek video at cobusmethod.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, go there, check it out. If you want to hear more about that kind of stuff, all you do is sign up, okay? You can sign up on the Facebook, or you can sign up via email, Twitter, whatever you want. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, whatever you want. Um, but now we're going to take some more questions. Dave, you Perfect. got one? Yes. Yeah. I've got one here, and I'm going to pick one randomly. Here we go. What inspired you to start playing drums? This is from Keegan Lang- Lancaster. What actually inspired you to actually start? Um, I've told this story many, 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 many times. We were, I never thought of playing drums in my life. I never thought of playing any musical instrument kind of until uh, end of 2001, I think like the December holidays in South Africa of 2001. I was in grade nine and we were on like on a school, on a church outreach and we went to this other church and they had like a drum set and a full band set up and the drummer kind of caught my eye because he was really, really good. Uh, played some, some really good stuff. And at the end of the very end of this outreach, one of the guys said, who wants to try and play some instruments? I think he, I think he kind of mentioned all the instruments, but I just heard who wants to play drums, and he, he just showed us that really basic, like, boom, ba, boom, ba, like the basic rock bit. And some people tried it, and we all were laughing, and it was really funny, because some people weren't really nailing it. And uh, it was a very fun, chill atmosphere, and I got behind the kit, and I picked up the sticks, and I could just, I could just play it. Like, I just play the, the beat straight up without any hesitation. I don't think I had the dynamics yet, but I just kind of... I, I could play the beat like right off the cuff, and it was obsession from that moment onwards. Like that was that was the start of all of this. So I, I, I can't explain that feeling. I, I still kind of fondly think back to it. It's a, it was a good moment. Uh, definitely, awesome. yeah, it was cool. life changing. Definitely. Cool. Uh, this, this is a question from uh, Unado, and and he actually asked a bunch of questions, but I'm just going to pull <laughs> one out. Unado always asks like 20 questions. Totally, totally does. Um, he's talking about when you are listening or playing to a song. Uh, do you hear upcoming riffs or passages of the music in your mind and then respond to it with something that pops up in your mind, or do you just let it flow? No, t- that's totally what happens. But that's letting it flow for me. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not different things for me. That is letting it flow. I think if you play along... Uh, to music for long enough, then you, you get to understand it a little bit. So if a drummer is doing a certain thing, then small things that he changes lets you know what's coming up. So like even adding a few little ghost notes or just opening the hats like a little bit, then you know within the next two, one or two bars, then it's gonna be the chorus. And you sometimes even if you if you know the drummer's style or if you can kind of relate to his style, then you can even sometimes anticipate fills. It's not like like friggin' telling the future or anything. It's just, uh, I guess it's just intuition or instinct. But uh, that's definitely what it is. In my mind, while I'm playing to, along to some of my favorite songs, I can always kind of hear what's coming next. I kind of anticipate it a little bit. But that just comes with playing along to music for hours and hours and hours and loving music, I guess. Awesome. Cool. I, got, I got a question for you here. This one's from Victor Dallin. It's actually one that I'm kind of interested in too. You did a video, like a 30 Seconds to Mars video, where you threw your stick up and it literally almost hit your camera camera yeah <laughs> that that uh, that could be it but what is the, mo- the video that you're most proud of like what is the one that you have like the you know that you're most happy or, or proud of? it'll definitely be one from the newest series um the, the thing is with the new series i did something completely different so it's like <coughs> except well apart from the production value being the highest that i've ever done mm-hmm. like i really tried to keep the playing like simple and just 
I tried to complement the music, and so that's where I am now musically. Mm -hmm. I'm not the Nexus series was kind of still in the in the old vein, and I might go back to that kind of little more self indulgent vibe when I do the next series. But but for this one, I really wanted just to keep it simple. And I just wanted to complement the music as much as possible with as few notes as possible. Yeah. So, so my proudest like video would definitely be from the newer series. Oh, it's really hard to single one out though. Um, I think it'll be maybe airplanes. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, we we I feel like I was really involved in the production of that song because I did. Um, a, a few guitar tracks with one of my friends, Justin Pearson, and he recorded some of the guitar tracks for the choruses and the verses, and they're really subtle, but they add something to the to the mix. So it just feels like an overall, like I was really creatively involved in the production. So that's why I kind of feel more proud of it, I guess. And I love the maracas. That just yeah. added such a cool yeah. vibe. So I think it may be that one, but it's uh, the whole new series actually is, is the stuff that I'm the most proud of, definitely. Cool, cool. Um, in, in regards to that, this is something we talked a little bit about last night, is the, um, and I asked, I asked you how you dealt with it. Is it already past that? Yeah, yeah, okay, totally. Okay, okay. Because, totally, totally. I, I mean, we post videos on YouTube all the time. And so, obviously, uh, if, if anyone posts any videos on YouTube, you know there's, there's yeah. always a... Uh, Troll. People, there's trolls. And, and, <laughs> yeah. I'm trolled. But there's people in the comments that, that uh, sometimes don't think they're actually... There's a real person on the other end yeah. reading it. And so they say stuff that's very, very mean. And so, <laughs> um, I know, like, obviously you get way more positive comments than negative. Yeah, but probably 95% positive, if not more. But uh, how do you deal with, you know, the negative comments and, and do you listen to them? Like, do you, do you respond uh, to their comments and then make changes? Or what, how do yeah. you take that? That's a, it, that's a question that kind of needs a really long answer, but I'll try to keep it as short <laughs> as possible. <laughs> I think, it's, it's, for me, it's really important to realize that, um, that my art and my expression is my first priority. And I love music and I love drumming. That's my first priority. The attention and the sponsorships and the tour to USA and Canada, that kind of stuff, that's all a nice, epically blessing bonus. That's what it is. It's not why I'm doing this. If all that goes away and I still get to play drums in my room by myself, then I am totally happy. And I'm not saying that to sound uh, like to take the high road or whatever, that is sincerely what I feel in my heart. That's, that's my first priority. So negative comments about, um, I mean, you get brainless negative comments. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate you, I hope your mom dies. Like something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, brutal. Dude, you can't imagine what people say. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why Kubis is so famous, he should just kill himself. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we don't think that. Haters, no, no, no. Haters. You guys really don't have to react that way. I've been, ha I've been getting this for years. Yeah, so, no, but I mean, no. stuff like that, that is like like a mosquito flying into the Empire State Building. Because it's just, it doesn't weigh anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those comments are totally brainless and they, they mean nothing. Yeah. Um, if anything, I feel sorry for those people. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean to be condescending. I'm just saying, like, if you can't enjoy music, then, then I feel sorry for you. Yeah, but, uh, totally. But um, I think the more constructive criticism kind of stuff, I love that. I love it because I've never had lessons before. That's why yeah. I post the videos in the first place. So if somebody says, in the second verse, I think it would have maybe sounded a little bit better if you played this on the hats as opposed to this because technically blah, blah, blah. Like actually like a little bit of constructive feedback. I yeah. love that. I love saying that's a really good idea. I'll try that <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or whatever. But those kind of comments, that's why I put up the videos in the first place. And I really regret not getting more of those comments. But um, with regards to the, the expression itself, like people saying the new series is something totally different, they miss all, the old chorus. And I guess that's fine. I mean, you, well, it's totally fine to have your own opinion, but I think it's really important to, to know like your art is your art and, and people are welcome to disagree, yeah. but it doesn't mean that you should change it. Well, well art is subjective, right? There is no totally. right totally. or wrongs totally. in art. Totally. So, yeah, that's the thing. But it's also not a completely closed <laughs> system. Like you said, I do listen. Like, I, when people said that, I thought, that's, that's, a, that's a valid point. Like, what is different? Because it definitely feels different to me. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's, it's a good place to be when you start, like, rethinking things, just trying to get perspective. And I realized it's, it's very polished and it's very kind of, I'm talking about the new series now. It's like very, very, it's a lot simpler than the previous videos. And I thought playing wise or play, well the whole the Everything. well the video is quite complicated but yeah, the, yeah. the playing was really just I just wanted to serve the song mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's it's nice to think okay cool people are saying this maybe maybe I should think about that maybe I should think 
aren't I uh, making the drumming too cold? Like, aren't I holding back too much? Maybe I should just let the cameras run and have fun again like I did in the beginning and not worry so much about serving the song. Or maybe just, just, just think about the balance, just be aware of where I'm going like where I'm moving, mm -hmm. even if, if, if I get that from the comments. So it's not like a close, I'm not this guy that says you can say whatever the hell you want, I don't even care, I'm just gonna do what I do. I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to know <laughs> that the art is the art. Yeah. yeah. And the supporters should be that, the supporters. They, I'm, not, I'm not doing this for money or for fame or for tours, I'm doing this because I love playing drums. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cool, well thank you. Yeah, awesome. Let me, let me ask you a question here that is more like a, a technical question. Uh, how do you do those stick tricks? I want to see you teach maybe one of your, your, your stick tricks or something you do. This is from Victor, is that Nibloom? Niblom? Niblom. Nibloms? Let Sorry me, if I mispronounced that. But, I'll, uh, sh uh, I'll show you guys the most simplest, stupidest, idiot, most idiotic stick trick. I don't want to insult the stick trick. I don't want to hurt its feelings, but it's exceptionally simple. It's just throwing the stick up and catching it. What the flip is more simple than that? So, so the, the, <laughs> the only question is uh, to find a place in the song where you can do that with, while keeping the kind of feel of the song going. So gaps in songs work really well. Face down, break down, throw stick, and then crash back in. But that's really simple. Uh, I guess it doesn't really impress everybody because it's, well, it doesn't, well, Maybe well, it's impressive when you do it in time. I, I think that's able. the thing. I think yeah, that's the thing. When you, when you keep it in time. But like I said, the mechanics of it is just throwing the stick up in the air and catching it. So it's like throwing a ball up in the air and catching it. So it's really, really simple. Uh, there are more complicated things like, like twirls and... I don't know. I, I'm not that big on tricks. But uh, there are a few more complicated things. There are many videos on YouTube explaining these a lot better than I can. Like Thomas Lang does, like he, like he explains showmanship like nobody else can, in my opinion. So uh, that, this is my favorite because it's <coughs> super simple. But um, yeah, you can, there are many things you can do. I think with regards to showmanship, as long as you enjoy it, as long as that's the main goal, then it's cool. If your playing suffers from it, then, then you should seriously rethink like pumping stick tricks into every song that you play. But if you enjoy it, and if it's fun to kind of nail those stick tricks and execute them and keep going, then that's a good place to be. Have you seen Chip Ritter do stick tricks? No, I haven't. Chip Ritter. He was... He's insane. Yeah, he's... Oh, really? Behind yeah. the back, over the shoulders. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, it's bizarre. He'll, he'll like an art just juggle uh, three sticks while keeping groove. Dude, yeah. that is crazy. Chip Ritter. Yeah, yeah I think he has, a, he has a, a DVD out called Stick Tricks with uh, Alfred. Or something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, good, good dude. Wow, yeah. wow. We should um, get to a play along here. You gotta. No, we don't. We don't have that. We still have some time. Do we? I'm just trying to make sure that we're not we're not running low. Quarter okay. two. Uh, let, let's just uh, let's get one more question here. Sure. sure. Uh, from Sub Rick in the Drum Lessons forums. Uh, how exactly did you get the endorsements that you currently have? Did you gain them solely through your video views, or did TRX and other companies approach you about endorsements? Well, that's the same question. Um, you you always well my, my understanding of endorsement deal is uh, and this is like the cold hard truth from my side people endorse you businessmen endorse you because you will get them exposure and ultimately sales that's kind of the cold hard fact so you can be the most talented guy in the world uh, but if you don't have the exposure then then uh, businessmen don't really have any business in sponsoring you because they they care about the exposure and the sales ultimately but then you get guys that are actually uh especially i'm thinking about uh paul of udram he is is he's more an artist than he is a businessman so he's actually a really he's he's the kind of guy that will invest in like in somebody that he thinks has talent uh, that's really scarce though i'd say with regards to endorsement deals um, publicity and kind of visibility is key like you can be an okay drummer, but if you have uh, 100,000 views a day, then you'll, you'll get an endorse you could get an endorsement deal. But it's, it's very subjective. There are no, really are no rules. Uh, with regards to my endorsement deals, I contacted TRX. I asked them because I really love the symbol, so I contacted them. Um, Udrum contacted me. I contacted Samson. Uh, so it's kind of, it goes both ways. It's not just, uh, you're not just sitting at home waiting for that call or that email. <laughs> I, I love TRX symbols, so that's why I contacted them. That's, yeah. I think that's, yeah. that's why. Cool. Yeah. Jessica's asking if you still wear your Cheer Up Emo Kid shirt. What's Jessica's surname? Resendez. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. That was good. 
I can't believe I actually got that right. And she says uh, you're super awesome and she loves watching your covers. Oh, Do thank you. you I appreciate it. Uh, do I, I don't know what that is. Do, do, I, I, <laughs> do I still wear my Cheer Up Emo Kid t-shirt? Cheer Up Emo Kid. Cheer Up Emo Kid. Yeah, I actually brought it along. I take it everywhere that I go, but I kind of always feel bad wearing it now because I don't want to insult the emo kids. <laughs> but I think they should cheer up. But I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't wear it. Oh, as, it's like that. It says that. <laughs> so, it says it says cheer, cheer up, my kid, with a sad little face and the tear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's. Uh, oh, I, man, yeah, I don't good. wear it nearly as much anymore because it 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 makes people look at you, and the old people don't get it because they don't know what the hell emo means. Yeah. And uh, the emo kids kind of give you the the stink eye. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Um. I think we gotta play to another track. Yeah, we yeah, gotta play along to a, a difficult track. Yeah, this one is crazy, you guys. So definitely <laughs> yeah, the, 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 ver the choruses are, are pretty simple, but the verses are like we. Jared gave me the song, this play along, and I specifically thought I want to play something that Travis Barker would have played. Yeah. So. And it's it's definitely like that. Yeah, yeah. it kind of yeah. turned out that way. I'm yeah. really I'm really <laughs> proud of it. But it's it's got this. Yeah, well, you'll see. It's got this little beat between the toms and the hide and the bottom of the snare and ghost notes and triplets everywhere. So it's kind of busy. Yeah. So uh, and, and and before we get started, you guys, um, we're gonna play a song and then we're gonna take some more questions and we're also gonna give some of your sticks away. Yeah. That's right. I brought yes. quite a few yeah. pairs. So Cobus in the recording of this product. Cobus will sign, sign them all and we'll ship them out to you, obviously free of charge. Um, and we'll, do, we'll figure out how we're going to give those away and probably just ask questions in the chat and stuff. Um, yeah, so with that said, you ready to go? Yeah, I think so. Let's give this a go. Okay.
That was awesome. <laughs> Sorry, everybody <laughs> clap. If you're saying anything to your eyes, <laughs> we can't hear you, but... You're, you're definitely an entertaining, like, such an entertaining drummer to watch. Oh, it's awesome. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm um, just digging it. Yeah, so we're going to give away... Those <sighs> went through tons and tons of sticks. Uh, some of them are still... They're just playable. kind of split, but they're still playable. But yeah. Coast, you don't mind signing them, and then we're just going to ask some some uh, trivia questions that we got about you. Yeah. Oh, about me? Yeah. Because <laughs> I actually wanted to propose that now. I thought. Oh, you did. Yeah, did you but have I didn't have questions. But it's it's incredible that you guys thought about that. Oh, we got that. some. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. If you have, yeah. How so, are we gonna are we gonna do this with the Facebook chat? Yeah. Drumming so you guys. Mushrooms.com? Yeah. So if you just it's right in the it's right in the chat. You just have to answer the first one to answer the question in the chat here. Um, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so here's all of his broken sticks that aren't we got five. five we got, we'll do five. <laughs> five pairs. We got a. We can actually give these away as well. Okay. Yeah, we, we, but we, we have another lesson we tonight. Have, yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And around. What is it? We ended 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, how 4. Many, how, many, how many pairs are we going to give away? We'll five. give away five, t five right now. Have we got more for tonight as well? Then? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're also going to give away, we're gonna give away your I... drum heads tonight. Oh, because okay. we need them And your cymbals. Right now, Do you so mind I don't want to give away your cymbals too? Okay. Yeah, he's going to give away all his cymbals. His drums. His, his drums. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I'm yeah, not. <laughs> let's get going. But I still love you, but I'm not going to give my cymbals away. Uh, <laughs> I can hear David Levine screaming in the background. for later on, but you don't use it right now. That's a, that's a big. How's he can change? How's he that gonna is sign an a enormous stick like sharpie? Like, I can write a C <laughs> and like lick the stick or well, something. Okay. He doesn't need to sign him right now, but we'll try and get you guys' names as well. Are we doing first to answer, or are you just randomly picking the first one you see? Yeah, we'll try and do first to answer, and if we can't find it because the chat goes so fast, we'll we'll do the first one we see. So it's gonna be completely random. Okay. Um, no one we know was allowed to win. Like who we know personally from yeah. here. Obviously, people we know online. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, since we're so online. But. Okay. Okay, so, here we go. Should I ask the first one? I'll ask the first sure. one here. What and, year? And, and I, I think I know the answers, but if, if not, we're wrong, then we'll... It's going to suck if I don't know the answers. Really. Oh, I'm sure you'll know the answers to these ones. If not, then maybe, yeah. Okay, I won't go there. What year did Kobus upload his first video to YouTube? Okay, come on, guys. First one. First to one to answer it. Jared, I don't know. I don't know this answer, so I you're know. looking. I know this one's there. Okay, good. You You're do? talking about first video, not first drum cover. First video. Oh, first there's video. A, there's a difference. Let's go with first video because the hardcore okay. fans okay. will know that. Okay. You see one? James says 2004. Michael says 1990. Chip James says 2006, 2004. <laughs> what? We said 2006. Chip James. Chip James. That is correct. Chip James, that's your first solo video, but yeah. your first cover was 2007. Quick little drum solo, correct, yeah. yeah. First, co first cover is 2007, but first video is 2006. Okay, okay. Chip, what's that? Go ahead. Chip James, uh, claim your prize by simply <laughs> nice. emailing. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> you, you, you got the best No, nah, dude, I can't, it, it needs to come naturally. I can't okay. force it. Uh, so in order to claim your prize, just email support at railroadmedia.com. James, do you mind throwing that on the screen? We got four more questions, so. Yeah. Support at railroadmedia.com. Say, I'm Chip James, I won the sticks. We'll make sure that we got your, your Facebook profile. Or you can contact me on Facebook, Jared Falk, yeah, if that's easier for you. That's totally cool. Um, but yeah, you got a pair of sticks. Awesome. Next question. Um, oh, I hope this is all right to ask. Oh, dude. When was my like first that? kiss or my first girlfriend? <laughs> oh, no. that one's Hey, there were questions like that, that I just avoided. So. <laughs> <laughs> some, some people are asking if you had a girlfriend. Um, what is Kobus short for? <laughs> Do you think people will get it? No ways. Dude. Really? I oh, think I'm you'd sure. be surprised, dude. I'm sure. What is Kobus short for? Because it, it's part of a... A, you know, a longer name. Just, I, just, if somebody gets this, somebody that's not... Yeah, you know, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay, are you looking in the chat here? Because I don't even know this answer. I'm looking. Oh, I like that answer. I'm sure that's not the right one, but... Did someone say it's short for Deedlebag? <laughs> Does like anybody the, know? The this native African hard? spelling of Deedlebag. This one might be a little bit too hard, actually. Yeah, that's a really hard one. No way. No, no, hold on. There's, there's Count co Cobulus? Is it Count Cobulus? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Cobasodustas? Uh, like Cobasodustas? No. Jekyll. Jared Fall? <laughs> Cobasaurus? No, dude. What the fuck? Is no it lost? Gonna get is it, it lost, Cobas? <laughs> oh, Jacobus. 
Who said that? Dan- Daniel Griffo. Oh, how, there did we they, go. how did they spell it? J A C O B U S. That's yeah, right. That's Jacobus. Yeah. Jacobus. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Boom. Daniel. Sorry, now it's all gone. No, I did. Daniel Griffo. Daniel what? Griffo. Yeah, he's got. Daniel Griffo, there all you, you do is email support at railroadmedia.com. And we'll get maximum respect and please don't stalk me because if you know that, then wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. Seriously. <laughs> you deserve a pair of sticks. It's okay. on. Okay, I got, I got the next one here. Let's okay. see. Okay, here's one that's pretty easy. I think you mentioned it already in this lesson. At what age did Koba start playing the drums? Oh, you mentioned the year, but not the age. So yeah. at what age did Koba start playing the drums? And again, I, I think I know the answer. I hope you do, <laughs> man. Okay. Here we go. Oh. It's funny how it all of a sudden just... At what age? <laughs> so not the year. We're looking for the age. Six. I got 17. Mm. 15. 15. 14. 10. <laughs> I wish I started that. Daniel idea. Owens says 16. Daniel Owens is correct. Daniel Owens. I knew that. That's what I thought. Yeah. Daniel Owens, email support at railroadmedia.com. We will ship you out a pair of sticks. And we apologize if you weren't the first to say 16. It just goes so fast. We're just picking the first one we yeah. see. Um, okay, I'll ask the next one. Who is Kobus's biggest uh, influence, drumming-wise? Who is his biggest drummer, drumming influence? He talked about this during this lesson. But there are, oh, there are two big ones, but you're talking about the one at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I try yeah, not to make us look bad here, Kobus. Okay, okay. <laughs> the current... Uh, oh, hold on. Tony Racer Jr.? Yeah. J- Jockey jo- Johnson Travis says Barker? Travis Barker? No, not anymore. Not anymore? Well, who is it then? Tony Racer. Oh, okay. Tony so Rose, so yeah. I've got Adam, Adam Winstein here. I have Jamie... It's too late. I already said Adam Winstein. Yeah. Okay, Adam Winstein. Oh, that person's going to be mad because I said their name halfway. Oh, okay, shoot. Jamie Winstein, you uh, got a pair of, yourself a pair of sticks. Email support at Railroad Media and we'll hook you up. Yes, Adam Winston Clark. And here's another one, uh, which you might think you'll have stalkers if people know this. Uh, what subject did Koba study in university? So after his high school days, what did he go on to study in university? <laughs> <laughs> what did he study and horribly fail <laughs> at university? <laughs> I'm stuck to see who knows this. Biology, engineering, mechanics? No. No? I did study oh, engineering Matt, at my... Matt Hollis says mathematical science. Oh, Matt Hollis! Yeah. Do you know him? No, I know a Pete. I actually... St- this is friggin... Freaky. I studied with a Peter Hollis. He was like one of my. He was probably my best friend when I was at in Stellenbosch. Nice. And I studied the 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 course with him. So I was like, is it the same guy? <laughs> yeah, guys, you have to give me a few seconds to recover from that. Cool. You but got, what did you say? You Mathematical go. sciences. Yes. Well, math, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. Cool. Um, so you got a pair, yourself a pair of sticks. Obviously, email. I say it every time. Email support at railroadmedia.com. Okay, you guys. Before we go, because cameras are all flashing, and that's how I know. Wow, that was a quick hour. That was a quick hour. It was. It was a very quick hour. But we are back again. Okay, we're back again <clears throat> in seven hours, I believe. So 11, mm-hmm. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no. 6. 12. He took mathematical one, two, three, studies. Four, what is it? Five. 7? We're back at, at six. 6. 7 hours. Seven yeah. hours. So we're back 7 hours from now. Unreal. So wherever you are in the world, just think 7 hours ahead. That's when we're back. So if your question didn't get answered, we're going to be back again. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, we're going to give away more stuff. Goes is going to play some more. I think it went really well. Yeah, dude, it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. lots of fun. Do you have anything you want to say to these people? I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Yeah. I don't know how many people are there, but I really appreciate the fact that you guys gave me an hour of your life. Yeah. That's like really important to me. That is crazy, hey? Yeah, it's crazy, you. man. Yeah. I mean so much. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and, and thanks, I guess thanks from us too. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> You're not here to see me, but <laughs> or Dave. <laughs> yeah. You said that so <laughs> yeah. <super> rough. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty mean. <laughs> yeah, thanks. thanks. <laughs> or Dave. Or Dave. <laughs> okay, guys, so um, like, if you want to go post your questions on the Facebook wall now, that's fine. I might prepare some more questions. Post your questions in the drumlessons.com drum form. That's yes. cool. I took some questions from there. It's a little more structured, and you can kind of word it differently and, and take a little more time. So totally cool if you want to do that. Um, otherwise, we will see you guys in seven hours. Yep. Otherwise, good night or good day or good evening.
or have a nice sleep or have a nice day if we don't see you again. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> who's watching it. <laughs>